Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is True Crime Stories by Big Potato Games. This is a game that plays one or more players. It is a true crime detective story game, and it comes with three different cases. You can play each case for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and it's for ages, I'd say probably like 13 and up. In the game True Crime Stories, you're getting three cases, each individually packaged inside the game box with their own story based on the US Postal Service investigation team uh, and the cases that they have solved. You'll go and start on the first case, move to the second, and then the third. And this game, as long as you use paper and pencil and don't write on stuff, can be passed on afterwards. This is not really an escape room game, this is more of a detective style game, linking one clue to another clue, attaching pieces of evidence, and of course utilizing not only what has come in this box here, but also your email address, perhaps a website, and more. This game here is all about getting your true crime detective like brain going in um, and solving these actual cases with different character names, like places and events and names have changed, but all the cases are based on real life historical events utilizing the US Postal Service in some way, shape, or form. Are you ready to solve the case? And go back in time and figure out what happened in these three unique cases in the game True Crime Stories. Let's find out and how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, my review. To play the game, the first thing that you're going to do is take out all the stuff in the box. There's quite a few things in the box that you'll be getting, but the main thing are three different envelopes. They're basically large case files that are going to have the classified um, icon on there, and then the name, and the number, and of course the difficulty. These range in difficulty from one star being the easiest to three, and then finally a big one, case three is going to be four stars. You'll just go ahead and set aside the other two cases and start with this one here, the Society of the Black Hand. You're going to set aside anything that says do not open or classified, and you're just going to have whatever is inside this envelope here. Now before you start, you're going to actually take a look at this um, uh, and basically the rules for the game. It's very simple though. You're going to use the clues and evidence inside the case files to figure out what happened. Uh, and it's going to kind of take you on a step-by-step -step basis as to as you solve these different crimes here. Uh, when you open up this case file, you're going to be getting a number of different pieces of paper, uh, your mission, as well as maybe some additional files that are locked until you can solve whatever it is they ask you to solve here. There's a website and an email address that you'll be using to send answers in in order to gain new information that will hopefully allow you to unlock new pieces of the puzzle to eventually allow you to solve the case. There's no real uh, how many times you can try this. You can kind of like uh, guess and check. There is a way in which you can use clues in order to kind of gain a little bit more understanding if you're missing something. So it will like direct you through the game as you go. It's also going to have a story. It's going to have unique different types of um, uh, resources that you can utilize and everything is pretty much drawn out for you but you have to try and solve the puzzle. This is basically a case that, um, and this is the only one I'm going to kind of spoil, um, and not really spoil, I won't tell you exactly the ending or whatnot, but the idea is somebody is using the post office in order to blackmail people. Uh, this is one of the first crime rings that has been solved through the US Postal Service. This is a true story with names changed, but you are attempting to figure out who among these vendors is the perpetrator, Yeah, as well as is this an international crime ring, uh, and that kind of thing. This is the uh, Black Hand Society, and they go around trying to uh, take money from other people in the area that are also vendors themselves. And you're going to go ahead and help uh, this guy named John Amicon, who is the Banana King, as well as um, Robbie Watts, who is the post office guy, who's going to give you his information, information, as well as you'll have ledgers of all this kind of stuff, and you'll slowly piece by piece figure out the puzzle, thusly allowing you to unlock new pieces of the puzzle. Um, different things might pop up into the game like a matchbox for instance or perhaps uh, different uh, mug shots of the different bad guys. Uh, maybe the yesterday's newspaper is going to show up and all sorts of random little things that you'll be able to try and use to deduce and solve the crime. Uh, when you solve one crime, you'll be able to go on to the next one and the next one and the next one. And that's basically the idea of the game. It is a detective game. It's about filling in the pieces of the puzzle and being able to solve each individual crime as they're laid out. And there is an order to which you could do so, but if you don't want to, you can skip 
but I highly recommend that you don't. Anyway, that's the basic idea of how you play the game, and uh, the setup is basically kind of included in that. It's a pretty straightforward open the box and play type of a game, true crime stories, so is it good? Over the years, I've played a lot of escape room style games, games where you're going to have to kind of deduce the puzzle by looking at the sides of the box or opening up a secret compartment that gives you a pen that allows you to open that up and find a little roll of information. This is not like those games. This is a detective game. This is more on the lines of those um, To Find a Killer series where you get a big box and it gives you evidence and you try and like solve this crime as it goes on. It's very similar to those type of games, but they're kind of individually packaged little games uh, and this whole thing comes with three of them. Each of them is about an hour to an hour and a half and as you open it up, it'll start off with a few letters explaining what you're supposed to do who you're supposed to talk to, where you're going to um, basically have the evidence from, like maybe it's from the fruit market, and they'll give you this little piece of paper indicating that this is specifically fruit market information. Or the Pinkerton Agency, when it explains, uh, this is the Pinkerton Agency, this is the information they got from these people, and here's how they acquired it, that kind of thing. And you are a detective from the US Postal Service. You feel like you are as well, and you are attempting to solve crimes via the mail. People often send things throughout the mail that aren't the greatest things, and you have to try and figure out where they came, how long it took to get there, and who could have sent it when based on their alibis and whatnot. And this game does a great job of that. The quality of the game is excellent. You are, of course, getting mainly paper, uh, and like different types of paper, obviously, whether it be newspaper clippings or photographs or whatnot. But uh, as opposed to some of those other games where you're getting like a bunch of different things, whether it be like, um, I don't know, the last one I had had like a bandana, it had like a whistle and a key and all that kind of stuff or a lock. This is specifically like documentation, which is what you would be using to solve a case like this. Now, because they can't exactly mm, like create the events from like the 1900s or whatever, what they ended up doing was attaching an email so that you can kind of converse back and forth with the det detective agency to try and determine, okay, this is, is this right? Is this wrong? Here's the evidence, which ones of these connect? And so you kind of have this back and forth, which has this like digital element to it, but it still feels like you're playing the case from way back when. And it does a great job of that. Uh, I like the artwork to the game. Um, I feel like it definitely represents the time. I like the fact that the game doesn't take too long. Um, and of course, I like the idea of being able to move on from one piece of evidence to the next. The clues are very detailed. When I played the first one, you can actually watch a video. I have a live stream that we did the other day of just the first one here. We ended up doing two of them so far. Um, but when we did that, it took us quite a bit of time for the first one, uh, as far as the challenge level goes. Now, I don't necessarily know if it's one, three, and four. That might kind of be off. These are probably like three, three, and four, or three, I don't know exactly. But they're, they're not, this one's not super easy, easy. This is actually quite a bit of thinking. And maybe I'm just missing something, or we missed one thing, me and Callie, as we were going through it. But it definitely is challenging putting pieces and like places and uh, timing and all that kind of stuff together to formulate like opinions, not being, if you miss a certain piece of data, uh, it can slow you down and you have to kind of retrace and go back and you do use all the evidence from previous envelopes in order to kind of connect with the new ones that have now been open. It does a great job of being a detective game. You're feeling like you're slowly solving the case, Wherever the pieces don't match or where they do match is how you're going to kind of solve who did what and when and where and what information that you have available to you. It is really, really great. I love detective games that make you immersed in the game itself, make you remember the game long afterwards. And this one here, specifically the first one, is one I'm going to remember for quite some time because it's not only just based on the story itself, but the fact that it was based on real events and something that happened a while ago that I got to kind of participate in, to understand exactly what it's like to be a detective in kind of this like uh, through the mail type of investigation thing that I didn't even know actually existed. I mean, I knew that the cops investigated the mail, but I didn't know there was a specific in, in, uh, division that does that. Although I did watch Catch Me If You Can, and I know that there is people who check like, I guess I kind of, I kind of knew that, but I had never like seen the process done other than I guess in that specific movie. And being able to kind of put myself into that role feels really, really good. 
This is a game that's definitely for people who have a detective's mindset, somebody who likes to put pieces of a puzzle together, not somebody who's like searching for clues in the way you would for an escape room game, but in documentation and solving and connecting the lines. Uh, people who like escape rooms will probably like this game as well. It has kind of a connection to those type of games. The fact that you can pass this on to somebody else is great. And the fact that you can play with a lot of people. People can scour through the evidence. You can play just by yourself. And it feels very immersive. Overall, True Crime Stories is an excellent little game by Big Potato Games. It's one of their more larger and depth versions of, of some games I've seen because they mainly do party games. But this one is a ton of fun and I do highly recommend it for those of you who like that type of thing. Do, do know though that it is challenging and if you miss stuff, you'll have to go back. And we on the occasion did miss stuff. We couldn't really figure out certain aspects to this or that and so we had to get a bunch of clues and we got stumped on some parts. Now, just because it got made us stumped, that, that doesn't mean I think it's good or bad because it might be I missed something and or she missed something or maybe we didn't uh, understand it like personally, it wasn't as clear, but maybe that's kind of the point. So I think it's kind of maybe be based on you as you play the game and maybe even if you have played this game, you can let me know in the comment section below. Was it super easy for you and me and her just missed some stuff in that playthrough? I don't know, but it doesn't matter because overall we had a lot of fun and I think you will too. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game True Crime Stories by Big Potato Games. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick this game up. And if you're as uh, characteristically good at these games as I am, you will have gotten your wonderful Ah, detective agency bag, my postal inspector, United States Service Postal Inspector badge. You'll earn that. Um, <laughs> all right, so yeah, you can have, there's a link down, down below. Okay, uh, there's also a website, unfurthergamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. If you want, and you have not done so already, and you think we've earned it, there is a subscribe button, yeah. Uh, and you've, you've seen more than one of our videos, you think we've earned it, click, click, click the button and the notification bell. Alright guys, I'm apparently zoning out, so as always, I look forward to making sure you don't put anything bad in the mail next time.